Hangzhou has always been a place where people aspire to a better life. 5,000 years ago, civilization dawned here, and the earliest prototype of a human city was born. Hangzhou found itself at the very throat of the Beijing Hangzhou Grand Canal, with the opening of the waterway, and the city sprang up from this. And today, the city has once again become a focus of world attention as a smart city. According to Dr. Wong Chen, cities never stop evolving. Innovation in science and technology is the primary driving force for urban development. The city is a city of the people, and ideas and beliefs determine the city's future. Today, innovative technology is profoundly changing the city as we know it. At noon, teachers and students flock from the classroom to the canteen, a battleground for Chen Weiyu. He must prepare lunch for 35,000 students and teachers within one hour. The reason for his calmness is his confidence in a set of data. Even a simple lunch for a university consumes vast amounts of resources every day. However, all this is just a microcosm of the normal running of a city. Today, more than half the planet's population lives in cities. Cities create prosperity, and prosperity makes cities increasingly complex things. Transportation, the weather, utilities, pipe networks. Each of these systems faces unprecedented pressure from urban expansion, and they are all inextricably linked. The slightest change can deliver unpredictable chaos to an entire city. Therefore, every city needs a super mayor with extraordinary abilities, intelligence, and an ability to work around the clock. Traffic congestion is a problem for cities. In the past decade, traffic congestion in cities around the world has worsened with the average congestion rate in major cities exceeding 40%, which not only puts people in a bad mood, but also impacts urban efficiency. Xinjiakou lies at the heart of the city of Nanjing, and beneath it is Asia's largest subway station, Xinjiakou Station, with 24 exits and an average daily passenger flow of more than one million souls. The Metro Management Department works ceaselessly under colossal pressure. This is known as the nerve center of the Nanjing Metro. It intelligently regulates capacity according to passenger volume. The only way to manage rush hour is to adjust departure intervals and increase capacity. In recent years, departure intervals of subway trains in large and very large cities have almost reached the limits. For every 10 seconds that intervals are shortened, capacity may increase by 5 to 8 percent. Although the reduction is only tens of seconds, it's a massive engineering operation. The secret behind it is an iterative upgrade of the smart signal system.
The innovative application of big data technology has improved the efficiency of underground transportation. Overground traffic, which is under the most pressure, will also encounter new changes under the guidance of smart technology. Xiang Shuibing is a Shenzhen traffic cop with four million followers who transformed scenes of law enforcement into vivid lessons on traffic safety. <laughs> Dapong district, where Xiang Shuibing works, is an extremely popular leisure destination for Shenzheners. The congestion here used to be pretty daunting during national holidays. The nature of traffic congestion is the contradiction between traffic supply and demand. What is most worrisome for traffic managers is that congestion can easily lead to secondary accidents and result in traffic paralysis in the city. 2007年的5月1日的時候呢,在當天呢,整個進入這個深圳東部的車輛達到了這個歷史的一個頂峰,所以呢,整個延巴高速它雙方向的擁堵時長呢,達到了23.5個小時。The conventional solution to congestion is to restrict certain vehicles from traveling, but this simple traffic management is a desperate move by the city. In 2019, the Shenzhen Traffic Police implemented travel appointment measures in congested scenic areas to relieve traffic pressure. This seemingly normal management experiment was to transform traffic density management into traffic requirement management. <laughs> To enter the scenic area, car owners need to use mobile apps to book. The system will book your access time based on the real-time traffic situation on the road. Behind this bold initiative lies the use of big data and artificial intelligence technology, integrated to create a new approach to intelligent transportation. Since this reservation system went live, congestion in the Dapong scenic area has been greatly improved. Although the total amount of traffic into the scenic area on holidays has not reduced, the congestion index has reduced by 60%. Advances in technology have brought about innovations in management concepts and tools. The penetrating application of artificial intelligence and big data has provided ideas and solutions for the intelligent resolution of urban problems. Dr. Wang Jian and his team, starting with urban transportation and extending that to all areas of the city, are using big data as a resource to create a new city management concept called urban brain. 一個城市呢,除了我們傳統意義上的土地啊,水啊,這些以外啊,就是我們多了一個非常重要的,而且也非常豐富的資源,數據資源。那麼這個數據資源實際上就變成了城市大腦的血液。In Hangzhou, the urban brain systematically connects various management departments aggregating 83.7 billion pieces of data, as if opening up the city's various neural networks to realize the perceptive depth of the city's complex systems. Without expanding road infrastructure, the urban brain has increased the efficiency of Hangzhou's road traffic by 16.5%. 
which is highly valuable in promoting the modernization and upgrading of the city's management concepts and tools. The feelers of the urban brain have unknowingly penetrated various areas of our lives. In the age of the internet, people need to browse through a huge volume of information every day. Because it is so closely related to our lives, the weather forecast has become indispensable. Sun, sand, and riding the wind and the waves. This is the free life that Li Peng yearns for. The enchanting holiday destination of Xiamen is the training ground for Li Peng's obsession. As one of China's first professional kite surfers, Li Peng has already won all associated domestic championships, and his goal is to participate in the next Olympic Games. Constantly testing himself in the stormy seas, Li Peng needs to devise a training plan according to accurate weather forecasting. Twen Zhou Bay, 100 kilometers from Xiamen, was once the starting point of the Maritime Silk Road and was a city born from the sea. Fishing was once the oldest occupation for Chuenzhou people. And right now, Captain Xie Juanyi is piloting his fishing boat to the open waters. Faced with changing seas and only able to rely on themselves, they were in a constant state of awe. Now, Li Peng's training on the waves and Xie Juanyi's fishing on the sea has the backup of a strong service team the National Meteorological Center of China. This is the nerve hub where the generation of authoritative weather forecast information in China is distributed. Improving forecast accuracy has always been at the very heart of their work. Every piece of information posted here affects the lives of 1.4 billion people daily. China is a vast country with complex and diverse natural geography and climatic types. There can be four seasons on one mountain and the weather can be entirely different in two places just 10 miles apart. The Qinling Mountains, stretching for thousands of miles from east to west, form a geographic boundary in China and are a natural watershed for China's climate. Every morning, Chang Qirong used to come here for a walk and to look around. As a meteorological observer, he has worked here for nearly 40 years. At that time, Chang Qirong's task was to manually copy and report meteorological data every hour, whether it was rain, snow, wind, or cloud. They needed to observe everything. Collecting and analyzing data is the basic method of weather forecasting, and more than 2,500 ground observation stations all over the country are the nerve endings of the National Meteorological Center's brain. Now, Jinan Weather Station has established automatic monitoring, and every five minutes, the monitoring data is uploaded to the National Meteorological Center, together with nearly 30,000 regional automatic weather observation stations nationwide, which provides a wealth of actual data for more accurate weather forecasting. <laughs> Wang Haiping, the chief meteorological analyst at the National Meteorological Center, is closely watching changes in satellite imagery. A strong tropical storm in the northwest Pacific is approaching the South China Sea. The meteorological analyst's assurance and confidence come from another partner in space meteorological satellites. As of 2019, China had successfully launched 17 Feng Yun series meteorological satellites.
becoming one of three countries in the world today with both polar orbiting and geostationary meteorological satellites. This interface that the Chinese are most familiar with is the work of China's latest generation of geostationary orbiting satellites, Feng Yun 4. Feng Yun 4 is synchronized with the Earth's rotation, which enables uninterrupted observation of specific areas. And this capability allows Wang Haiping's team to track the dynamics of the typhoon in real time. According to the latest cloud maps, this strong tropical storm will make landfall off the coast of Fujian province, exactly where Xie Zhuanyi's fishing boat is located. Decades of experience at sea have given Xie a keen intuition for sudden changes in the sea. Unpredictable typhoons are becoming some of the most destructive natural disasters in the world. An average of 26.5 typhoons are generated each year in the Northwest Pacific Ocean. According to official statistics, direct economic losses caused by typhoons to China's coastal areas average nearly 50 billion yuan per year. As the typhoon approached, the atmosphere at the National Meteorological Center became tense. Every hour, the Wong Haiping team had to conduct a conference call to dispatch a monitoring bulletin to areas where the typhoon might make landfall. At this point, the strong tropical storm was clearly displayed in front of everyone. Based on its possible future path, region, and scale of impact, the emergency command centers in relevant coastal cities were on standby. At the same time, the coordinates of Sears fishing boat had also been locked onto by the Quenzhou Disaster Emergency Command Center. The nearest sheltered harbor was three hours away, close enough for Sia to safely evacuate to. Once upon a time during the typhoon season, the fishermen had to entrust their lives to a large stick of incense in the temple every time they left harbor. But now, with professional and systematic meteorological assistance, Sia has been able to put his fate in his own hands. With the increasing accuracy of ground and satellite monitoring, China generates terabytes of meteorological data every day. The storage and analysis of such massive amounts of data requires a super brain. Supporting Wang Haiping and her team are supercomputers with ever-increasing capabilities. China's new generation of supercomputers has reached 1.25 billion calculations per second, a second of computing power that would take 1.4 billion people 10,000 years to calculate on an abacus. Observational data from the sky and ground, along with powerful computing power, allows people to predict weather conditions with increasing accuracy. The current three-day advanced weather forecast has a global accuracy of 70 to 80 percent. On the meteorological front, China is quite a developed nation, but there is still a long way to go before it becomes top ranking. With the help of science and technology, People in modern society look forward to real-time perceptions of absolutely everything, to predict rain and wind, to predict changes in the world, and plan ahead. Chengdu 
is a city that you don't want to leave. The atmosphere of ease and leisure permeates every corner of the city. of his 10th wedding anniversary, Han Peng specially reserved the highest location overlooking the city, and he wanted to give his wife a special anniversary present. The 339-meter high Qin Chu Qianfu Tower, known as the tallest tower in Western China, is a classic landmark in the city of Chengdu. This is the highest place in Chengdu. I've been walking here from here, but I've never been able to get up here. Now, the highest place in Chengdu is more and more. From this perspective of Chengdu, you will find out, hey, where is this? I don't know. Hey, this is What grows with love is the city's ever higher skyline. When you look out over the stunning view of the city at night, you forget how high you are. At the weekend, Wu Xiaobin took time out to watch a friend rehearse for a concert. For this architect, music is an art of harmonious vibrations and musical instruments. But his work faces a disaster brought on by discordant shocks, earthquakes. Du Jianyang is a marvel in the history of the world's water conservancy projects, having survived thousands of earthquakes over the past 2,260 years. It's now solid as a rock, nourishing thousands of hectares of good earth in this abundant land. This is also the source of Wu Xiaobing's ideas. Wu Xiaobin is currently involved in the design of a super high-rise building, 488 meters tall, and his task is to provide seismic solutions. The essence of earthquakes is energy transfer, and Wu Xiaobin's design of a vibration-absorbing structure attempts to maintain the safety of the building structure by absorbing earthquake energy and preventing energy transfer through the principle of the mortise and tenon joint structure that relieves force. The indispensable component is the damper, which is equivalent to adding a circuit breaker to the building. Guan Qinsong is an expert in designing shock absorbers for buildings. Beijing Daxing International Airport, which will in future be able to handle 72 million passengers and 620,000 aircraft annually. The innovative seismic design solutions were extremely challenging. Beneath Daxing Airport, there are several urban rail lines laid out. The architects had to consider how to reduce vibrations caused by the high-speed trains and how to make the airport more comfortable for passengers. The perfect solution was to suspend the entire terminal building above the foundation, and Guan used vibration isolation technology to achieve this seemingly daring idea. The 
，通常是有橡胶制作，可以把地震发生以后的能量大部分消减掉，所以传到上部机构能量呢就已经减弱了很多。1,376 sets of seismic isolation components form a huge seismic isolation layer, which can offset 80% of seismic vibration, plus the dampers distributed on the main structure, making Daxing Airport dynamic and quiet. Innovative thinking and innovative technology continue to create amazing things. There is always a group of people whose job it is to guard the safety of the city. On New Year's Eve, when the whole family is reunited, what they're facing is a fire alarm. I The fire station that Jiang Weinan is in protects one of the areas where China's super high-rise buildings are most densely populated, Beijing's central business district. This 最困难的一点就是它它的这个灭火器材的一个输送，也会造成我们队员的这个体力的消耗比较大。Super high-rise buildings are buildings with a height of more than 40 floors and more than 100 meters, and the highest reach of the current fire truck ladder is only 101 meters. 高度的增加对我们的这个最大的一个挑战就是这个体能的一个挑战。Jiang Weinan is ready at any time to climb high in the fastest time with his heavy load to complete the task of high-intensity firefighting. This one. These people who go against the flow are seen as heroes. They are somebody's sons, somebody's husbands, somebody's fathers. But who will protect their own safety? Keeping these heroic individuals at a distance from the fire is what scientists and technicians are trying to do. The high-rise dry powder projectile fire truck has a maximum range of 600 meters which is the maximum height for high-rise buildings in China today. How to exceed limitations and make smart firefighting equipment safer is a new challenge that requires new solutions. 7号8号准备,将灭火弹转运至现场. In Yi County, 100 kilometers from Beijing, engineer Yang Xinguan is commanding a battle involving high-tech weaponry. Yan Xinguan's research and development over many years to build this magical appliance will change the fate of China's 170,000 firefighters.
。虽然最后所有的消防灭火都是靠人力去解决，但是希望前期，希望危险的时候，咱们消防员可以离得远一点。Firefighting drones have centimeter accurate positioning, which can aim and shoot fire extinguishing bombs under any environmental conditions. Perhaps this one fire extinguishing bomb will pave the way to a new era of intelligent firefighting. Safety is what everyone hopes for. Technology creates a safer living environment, and technology also ensures people's safety. This is how cutting-edge technology has unwittingly penetrated every corner of the world, constantly enhancing people's sense of well-being. bustling city. We find a completely strange underground world where the arteries and blood vessels of the city converge. Hangqin of Zhuhai is China's youngest free trade zone. Ten years ago, it was an isolated fishing village with only 2,000 islanders and oyster fields everywhere. As one of the most experienced sailors on the island, Su Xiaotang has been traveling on this river for many years. And as he remembers, the dramatic changes in Hengqing create a magical landscape. What was once a quiet oyster field has now become a happy ocean amusement park. Huang Jitsun, a native of the area, is now creating joy for children in this amusement park. Over 10 years, Hangqin Island has developed into a prosperous city comparable to Macau, which is just across the river. Wang Jitsung has experienced this magical transformation firsthand. The secret is buried beneath Hengqing, and He Jian is the man who holds the key to it. The 33.4 kilometer long underground tunnel through Hengqin Island is the core of the entire Hongqin infrastructure project the city's underground integrated pipe tunnel. Traditionally, in urban planning, the various pipelines belonged to independent systems. With the expansion of the city, the underground pipeline network has grown haphazardly. This not only affects the appearance of the city, but is also not conducive to comprehensive management. Comprehensive urban pipelines provide a solution. For a city where land resources are extremely precious, underground pipeline tunnels are like a pre-installed integrated circuit board for the city, which greatly advances the speed of urban construction and lays a fine, intelligent foundation for the integrated management of urban resources and future construction. The dramatic changes in his hometown were like a dream. Without today's Hongqin, perhaps Su Xiaotang would still be a fisherman, 
envying the prosperity and splendor on the other side of the river. Perhaps Huang Zhezong would have left to pursue his dream. Society progresses, and miracles happen in everyone's life. Everyone is a participant and has been a beneficiary of this era. More than 200 years ago, mankind discovered electricity. City nights were first lit up, and the engine of social progress was started. Just as with air and water, mankind has been inseparable from electricity ever since. As Chinese families entered the age of home appliances, the constant evolution of these family items have improved the quality of life, making the home more convenient, safer, and a joy to live in no matter where you are. Behind all of this is the need for a more adequate power supply. In the digital era, the development and transformation of lifestyles have elevated people's demand for electricity. In the two decades from 2000 to 2019, the total electricity consumption of urban and rural residents in China has increased by an average of 8.9% per year, with annual per capita electricity consumption rising from 132 kilowatt hours to 732 kilowatt hours. The dramatic increase in personal electricity consumption is a testament to the pace of progress in Chinese society. Electricity not only sustains the general functioning of cities, but also serves as a bridge for every Chinese to cross from one age to the other. 70% of China's population is concentrated in the east, with 12 of China's 15 cities of 10 million people also located in the eastern part of the country. Relatively abundant electricity resources are concentrated in the vast western part of China. Insufficient power resources and dense population distribution have resulted in power shortages in the cities of eastern China. West to east power transmission has become the key to alleviating this problem. Changji, Xinjiang is the starting point of the world's most advanced ultra-high voltage direct current transmission cable. This converter station is equivalent to the access point of this power highway, and its mission is to convert alternating current into direct current. The 3,300 kilometer transmission cable spans thousands of miles of mountains and rivers, from the western Gobi to the central and eastern regions, in a continuous and abundant flow of power. And the whole process takes less than a second. In the main control room of the converter station, an intelligent monitoring system enables real-time monitoring of this long transmission cable. But the circuit, which spans diverse landscapes and complex climatic zones, still requires close attention. Yang Kai is an inspector on the cable, and it is his usual job to trek alone beneath the 1100 kilovolt high voltage tower line in the rain, snow, cold, and wind. Now Yang Kai has a new work partner. <laughs> Because 
距离多少米？即将达到线飞高度。我们一般会用一个三十六倍变焦的一个长焦镜头，线路不能靠得特别近。所以咱们用一个长焦的镜头能拍得特别清楚。再一个，咱们会用到红外热成像的镜头，观测它线路有没有发热的迹象。This work partner has increased Young's efficiency 15 times, and he can inspect 80 towers in one day. The 1,100 kilovolt high voltage transmission cable delivers 66 billion kilowatt hours of electricity to the central and eastern regions per year, meeting the annual electricity needs of 40 million households and setting a new record for energy conservation and emission reduction, reducing coal transportation by 30.24 million tons and reducing soot by 24,000 tons and sulfur dioxide by 149,000 tons. Electricity has become a basic energy source for social development. Yong Kai, who lives in Changji, Xinjiang, has never been to Shanghai and hopes to visit the city that never sleeps one day. Innovative technologies from all eras have permeated every corner of the city. In today's digital age, where humans have unprecedented computing power and algorithms, a new generation of information technology is making cities smarter, more intelligent, and more livable, especially when people need it. A small restaurant with a hard-to-find table. It has taken Mr. Chong 18 years to turn this Shaoxin restaurant into one of the most popular in the city. At the beginning of the new year 2020, the coronavirus pandemic suddenly swept the world. And the restaurant's boss, Mr. Chong, who had been busy for 18 years, unexpectedly encountered the longest holiday in his history. After many months waiting, the year of torment is finally over, and the marketplace that we were all waiting for day and night finally returned. In Mr. Chong's opinion, the small health QR code was the restaurant's talisman and saving grace. After the outbreak of the coronavirus epidemic, an online prevention and control system was launched for the first time in urban and rural areas at all levels and the health QR code became an important means for the whole of society to fight the epidemic. Today, while the world's anti-epidemic situation remains severe, Chinese society and the Chinese people can quickly and comprehensively resume normal work and life, and the small health QR code played a key role. The sudden pandemic made people understand the role of cutting-edge technology in the whole prevention and control system more clearly and thoroughly. The city becomes more and more intelligent and orderly, and an invisible but ubiquitous super-mayor is accessing and serving cities.
，更是一场由政府、企业和市民共同参与的数字化的思想进化。其实城市应该是生活在这个城市的人，因为他们的活动，慢慢的让城市长成这个样子的，进化到今天，它慢慢一定会出现的东西。那么它的一个很重要的作用就是，这个它能够感受到生活在这个城市里的人，他们希望城市变成什么样，慢慢的也来调节，让这个城市像人向往的那样。The eternal yearning for and relentless pursuit of a better life has always been the driving force behind the advancement of human society. Humans used their wisdom to create tools and means to make people's work and life more convenient, safer and happier, little by little. In the process, cities, which are supreme achievements of human civilization, have become more humane and technologically rich. Cutting-edge innovation is changing people's lives, and an era of true wisdom is coming, carried aloft by the wings of technology. Thank、you.